Greetings, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Books and Buds, where we discuss the books that don't receive the attention we feel they deserve. Today, I brought my special guest, Patty. Hi. She's a little nervous. It's her first video, so let's be easy on her in those comments, all right, everybody? So, today, we're going to be discussing a book by Paula Coelho. You're probably more familiar with his title, The Alchemist, but some of you might not have heard of By the River Piedra, I Sat Down a Wet. Now, this was a book that her and I, this one means a lot to us because on our very first date, we started talking about books and bonded over this guy. We bonded over him because it was one of her favorite writers, and I had never read him. I had only heard of The Alchemist. But then listening to how she described, which book was it? Well, it was Veronica Decides to Die. I was reading the book, and I think it was almost done when, I, when you and I met. So I was so touched by that book because it's such a beautiful story. But it's also a movie mm -hmm. about that book. So if some people don't want to read the book, you can also watch the movie. It might not be as good as the book, just like any other book in a movie, but it's still worth it. Mm. it. It was starring Sarah Michelle Gellar. She did a good job, too. It was nice. I hadn't seen her acting in a little while, and she hasn't lost her touch. But... What happened for me was on our date, just the way she described that book, the look in her eyes, I was like, I got to give this guy a try. So I ended up picking up The Alchemist because it was the most talked about book of his, and I was completely impressed by him. So then I read Veronica Decided to Die, which we'll probably discuss in a future video, just depending on how this one goes. But a little later on, uh, some time went by in our relationship, and she picked up this book and was so impressed by it that she suggested I read it, which I did immediately. And I could totally see what she was so impressed by. It was so simply written, yet eloquently written. And it seemed like the story was written in the words that he left out because your imagination really took you to a different place in this novel. Yes, you know, something I want to mention about this book. Well, like you, um, Paulo Coelho has such a beautiful writing. I just love his mind. He has beautiful thoughts. Even just the posts that he shares on Facebook or Instagram, they're just beautiful yeah. short stories. But also in this book, the way he writes the story, it's such an feminine way that it's just impressive because he's a man. And when mm -hmm. you think, how can he write that way? It's, it's just impressive. It's incredibly artistic. The, the man has a way with prose. And like I said, he's, he's a man of small words. He doesn't use a lot of words to describe a scene. But you're completely in there. It's just the imagery is unbelievable. Um, so yes, talking about the feminine writing, it's it's funny that you mentioned that. It comes up at a good time because this this book does have a lot to do with feminine energy, because the main character, what was her name? Pilar. Pilar. I forget how to pronounce it, um, but she ends up receiving a letter from her sweetheart back when she was a teenager. And he left the small town after after high school or whatever and decided to go try to ex experience life for himself and grow as a man. So he found religion, and he's kind of climbed the ranks, and now he's a famous lecturer of sorts. And she doesn't realize how famous he is, but she invites him to a town that he's going to be coming to. It's close by. When she goes to the venue, she's blown away by how many people are there. So that's when she meets those two women. Oh, yeah, the women that are talking about him. Yes, yeah. because she walks in, Pilar walks into this room where he's going to give out a seminar. And there's this woman saying, oh, he, he's going to give us back, um, yes, what it was taken from us. Mm -hmm. And there is another woman who says, well, he can't give back to us what it was not taken away from us. It always belonged to us mm -hmm. because she she believes in the women are a very important part of society. So there is, we always have had that power. Mm -hmm. It was never taken away from us. It, it's an interesting scene because it's, it's at the beginning of the book, but it sets up the rest of the book because she goes to speak to him afterwards to see what on earth is going on because she wasn't prepared. She was just coming here to see him. So she didn't really understand what the subject matter was going to be about. So after speaking with him later on, he describes how Judaism... Catholicism, Islam, are all masculine tra uh, traditional religions, but how they don't really talk about the female. And actually, some of these religions, they, they're pretty nasty towards women if you read the books. 
So I understand why some women might feel that it was taken away from them, but I also can see the other side of the argument where some women were like, it was never taken away from us because something can't really be taken away from you if you don't let it be taken away from you. Something like your spirituality, anyways. That's a good point. Yeah, yeah that's so, a good point. It, you know, mm -hmm. that's another reason we like this book so much. It really makes you see things in a different way. Yeah, it's, it's so... It's so beautiful, me as a woman, to see that love story, because we, we love, we love love stories. Mm -hmm. So it's so beautiful to see that, how he knows he feels something for Pilar, but mm. he, at the same time, he has this responsibility, because he was given a gift by the, um, by the mother, mm -hmm. I think, the great mother, I think, the that's how he comes. Yeah, yeah, Mother Mary, in other words. Yes, yes, so he has this powerful gift and with this gift he is helping humanity but at the same time he is a man who has fallen in love with this woman so he, he is in this predicament like what am I going to do and then he asks the, um, the great mother for guidance and that's I, I love that the love story in this book yeah he does a good job because it, it touches upon so many incredible things but there is a love story a uh, uh, kind of a story of second chances because mm -hmm. they don't come together again the two main characters till 11 years so now they're adults but there's of course the problem of religion being in the way of whether or not they're going to get together again and, and give it another shot but these this problem in particular leads to the end of the book uh, I don't want to give away what happens whether they get together whether they don't but it doesn't matter he wraps it up unbelievably. There's there's no chance for a sequel in this book. I mean, even for something as thin as this, it just touches upon so many things that it doesn't really leave too much room for anything else. It's very fulfilling. It's like eating a big sandwich. It, it's hard to finish it, but it was it was delicious. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how else to describe it. You don't need to eat any more after you're done with this book. It was great. Put it down. Reflect for a little bit. Maybe take a nap. <laughs> no, I think that, I mean, yes, it is it is very important. At least in my opinion, when you read a book like this one of this caliber, reflect. Because if you just rush through the pages and then, oh, yeah, it was a good book, and put it away, you don't really get the meaning of the book. It's such a beautiful mm. book, such a beautiful mind. It's, you definitely need to reflect. Yeah, you might want to wait a couple of days, maybe a week before you pick up another book. It's also a good idea to read it with somebody who's also going to be finishing it in the same time period so you can discuss it. But that's kind of what we do on this channel. We like to bring attention to books that you guys have never heard of. Or, well, you probably heard of this book, but chances are real good that you've heard of The Alchemist instead. But it, The Alchemist wasn't one of our favorite books by him. It just wasn't. So give this one a shot. Give Veronica Decides to, uh, to Die a shot. Give any of his other books a shot, too. The man doesn't need the money, but it's not really about that. It's about the message he's trying to convey in some of these books, and this one was one of the better ones. It really was. So thank you for watching our little program today. We will be leaving a link for this book in the description below. We hope that you guys give it a shot. We hope that you guys let us know in the comments what you think about the book. Until then, we love you guys. And have an awesome day. Bye.